Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're calling in from around the world. And thank you for joining me for a quick overview of pluripotent stem cell characterization assays. My name is Deborah Tyberg, and I'm a product manager within the cell biology business of Thermo Fisher Scientific. I've been with the company 14 years and currently manage the primary and stem cell matrices and reprogramming portfolio of products in addition to a suite of stem cell characterization kits designed to make it easy to QC your new or existing pluripotent stem cell lines. As you can see, Thermo Fisher offers a broad range of instruments and reagents that help you find answers to the challenging problems you face every day as a stem cell researcher. From the ion torrent platform of next generation sequencing instruments to the EVOS platform of cell imaging stations, we can provide just about anything you need to get your experiments done quickly and efficiently. But today, we're going to focus on assays at the center of the stem cell workflow depicted here. If you've been around the stem cell field for any length of time, you'll realize that the workflow on the previous slide is a bit of an oversimplification. In reality, it's critical to check the quality of your lines at multiple points in time. While you may perform more extensive characterization on a newly derived line, it's also important to verify the integrity of a line after significant manipulations, such as extended culture or gene editing. We'll explore a few types of questions you'll want to answer about your lines on the next slide. So the first question to answer is, do I have a pluripotent line? And there are multiple readouts for the different aspects of pluripotency that vary in sensitivity and specificity. Detection of morphology and surface marker expression is quick and non-destructive, but offers a limited amount of information. Even to a trained eye, the most that can be concluded is that the cells are likely to be capable of self-renewal, which is only one aspect of pluripotency. Endpoint analysis of multiple transcription factors at either the mRNA or protein level is more specific, but typically takes longer to get an answer. The most important question to answer in determining pluripotency is whether the line is capable of trilineage differentiation. This is generally done by generating embryoid bodies in vitro or by teratoma formation in vivo, although some researchers prefer to perform directed differentiation into the three embryonic germ layers in monolayer culture as an alternative. We'll cover more about these types of assays later in the presentation. One example of a very rapid but somewhat less specific screening assay is alkaline phosphatase staining. Alkaline phosphatase is an enzyme that is expressed at a much higher level in pluripotent stem cells than in mammalian fibroblasts. While terminal dyes have been very popular for analysis of alkaline phosphatase expression, Thermo Fisher offers a live stain for alkaline phosphatase that is non-destructive, allowing cells to be propagated after the analysis. Shown here are one ES and one IPS line on a lawn of inactivated mouse embryonic fibroblast feeders. Careful washing after staining enables detection of bright green stem cell colonies against the very dim feeder layer background. Another option for live staining employs dye-conjugated antibodies to differentially express surface markers. This method takes a little bit longer than AP live staining, but offers an improvement in specificity. The images here demonstrate green staining of feeders with an Alexa Fluor 488 conjugated antibody to CD44, and red staining of an IPS colony with an Alexa Fluor 594 conjugated antibody to TRA160. Thermo Fisher offers live staining kits that include a conjugated antibody and fluorobrite DMEM, an optically clear medium that improves image quality and maintains cell health during staining. Another application of these live staining kits is in the detection of partially reprogrammed colonies. Analysis of PSE colonies by morphology alone requires both expertise and experience. Newer stem cell scientists may prefer to verify their colony selection with antibody staining while they become comfortable with identification of the best colonies to carry forward. An example of colony identification is shown here. 
colony is expressing both CD44 and TRAL160 are likely to be only partially reprogrammed and should not be picked for further pathaging and expansion. In contrast, colonies expressing only TRAL160 are more likely to be fully reprogrammed. The images here again show TRAL160 in red and CD44 in green, and co-staining is shown in yellow. While live staining works great for surface markers, it's also important to show expression of relevant nuclear markers such as OCT4 and SOX2. Thermo Fisher offers several kits for immunocytochemistry analysis of fixed cells in both the undifferentiated and differentiated states. These kits offer a complete set of reagents for superior imaging of stem cells in one box. Primary antibodies were selected for performance and matched secondaries were chosen for easy multiplexing. In addition, the protocols for these kits eliminate unnecessary wash steps to maximize cell retention and minimize hands-on time. This is an example of data that can be obtained on an EVOS FL imaging system using these kits. A donor-derived IPS line was fixed, then permeabilized with a detergent that preserved the integrity of the surface glycoprotein SSEA4. Efficient nuclear co-staining of OCT4 with DAPI is shown in purple, and SSEA4 is shown in green. Similar multiplexing data can be obtained with kits that include antibodies for TRAL160 and SOX2. Another product in this family, the 3 germlayer immunocytochemistry kit, enables verification of trilineage differentiation in embryo bodies. The antibodies chosen for the kit confirm both relevant marker expression and expected cellular morphology. In this case, the presence of ectoderm is demonstrated by expression of beta-3 tubulin, or 2J1, mesoderm by expression of smooth muscle actin, or SMA, and endoderm by expression of alpha-fetoprotein, AFP. The last several assays discussed provide very nice images but provide no quantitative data. For that, we turn to flow cytometry. The results shown here were obtained with the Attune Acoustic Focusing Cytometer and demonstrate that populations of PSCs can be further characterized by the percent of cells expressing a particular surface marker. In this case, Alexafluor 488 labeled TRAL160 and Alexafluor 647 labeled SSEA4 antibodies are used to show that over 99% of the population expresses both proteins. So all the assays discussed up until this point analyze expression of markers at the protein level, which is certainly very important. However, imaging and flow platforms are limited in the number of markers that can be analyzed simultaneously. Quantitative PCR is convenient for measuring the amount of RNA expressed for a large panel of factors. It is also more sensitive in that embryo bodies can be tested for trilineage differentiation after just seven days in culture. TACMAN HPSC scorecard assay and its accompanying analysis software application provide a rapid and affordable alternative to teratoma formation. For more details and a side-by-side -side comparison of these two methods, please refer to the recent Nature Biotechnology paper referenced below. Example data for H9 ESCs before and after spontaneous differentiation are shown here. In the upper left, the results for the samples are shown at a glance as either aligning more closely with the undifferentiated reference set or the EB reference set. In the lower left, the numerical scores associated with those results are shown against the backdrop of scores for the undifferentiated reference set. On the right side is an example of the expression heat map, which shows the fold change in individual gene expression for the samples of interest relative to the average expression of those genes in the reference set. Last but not least, a line must be tested for genetic stability. Of course, the gold standard method for detecting aneuploidy and gross chromosomal rearrangements is G-banded karyotyping. While a result of 100% normal is ideal, the appearance of fewer than 10% non-clonal aberrations or artifacts is generally acceptable. Array CGH and sequencing are higher resolution methods of identifying genetic changes after reprogramming or extended culture.
In summary, let's review a few of the resources available for obtaining more information about the products and assays we've discussed. For cell model services, navigate to thermofisher.com slash cell model. For training courses, thermofisher.com slash life lab. We also have product selection guides available for PSC culture, stem cell analysis, PSC characterization, and stem cell antibodies. We also have an area dedicated to information about the HPSC scorecard assay. Note that we also have field applications and technical support available for any questions you may have. Finally, here is a list of products we discussed today along with their catalog numbers. I'll leave this up for just a couple of seconds for you to jot down any notes you may need. Thank you so much for your attention today, and please feel free to reach out to me at any time at deborah.tyberg at thermofisher.com. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have about stem cell matrices, reprogramming, or stem cell characterization products. Have a wonderful day.